for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. James 1 verse 7 Who is that person? Verse 6 makes it clear that the person being referred to is the doubter. Doubt embeds poisonous seeds in our minds that will kill our faith. The more we entertain doubt, the more we sink into the mire of disbelief. God will not reward our faith with the blessings we seek. Fear can be a crippling emotion and will cause us to miss out on the blessings of God, such as peace, joy and happiness. We are told, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10 God desires to give us the blessings of inner strength and fear closes the door on that blessing. We cannot get blessings of victory if we are fearful. We must proceed in faith. The path of faith is a blessed one. God is forever with us, so we are told by Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. John 14 verse 1 The path of believing in God is a proven track. We can look at the witnesses of Abraham, Sarah, Rahab, Noah, Moses, Samson, Joshua, David and the countless others in the Bible. These men and women exercised faith in the face of doubt and fear and were all rewarded richly by God. If you have no faith, you have no breakthrough. If you have a little faith, you have a little breakthrough. If you have big faith, you have a big breakthrough. All of God's response is a response to our faith, to faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. All you need is the faith of a mustard seed. It does not take great faith to believe in a God that never fails. I wish I could tell this to each of you individually, that God is faithful. He has never failed. Failure is not in his nature. And he will not fail you. The God of this Bible is still Jehovah Jireh. This book clearly states he will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you above and not beneath. He will give you vineyards you didn't plant and wells you did not dig. He plants you by streams of living waters so that whatever you do shall prosper. Only believe in the God of this Bible. There is nothing more powerful than your faith. Yes, you have been praying, but do you have faith? Yes, you have been fasting, but do you believe? Real faith can grab God's attention in heaven and move him into action on your situation. Mark 5, 36, do not be afraid, just believe. God has not left you, God is with you. You are going to make it. When you think you can't take another step, when you think you can't live another day, when you think you can't take another disappointment, reach out in faith to the God that winds and waves obey. He holds the seven seas in the palm of his hand. He calls the stars by name. He measures the heavens with the span of his hand. He is the rock of your salvation. He is the cornerstone, precious, and elect in Zion. He is my shelter in the storm. But yet still, she gave birth to her child. What does that tell us about God? It tells that our God is not limited to my biology. He is not limited by the natural laws of this universe. He operates above them. My ways are not your ways. Your time may look like it will never come, but with God, he is able. Just trust his timing. We see it in the life of Joseph. The book of Genesis tells the story of Joseph who waited many years for the fulfillment of the dream God had given him. 
He had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him. They hated him when he told them the dream. He then had another dream, showing not only his brothers bowing to him, but also his father and mother. His brothers were so angry they wanted to kill him. So instead they betrayed him, sold him into slavery. He was falsely accused and imprisoned. And whilst he was in prison, he went from a prisoner to the second most powerful man in the world at that time, in a day. And the dreams he had as a boy began to come into fruition right before his very eyes. Why? Because his appointed time had come. It was nearly 14 years between his dream and the time he left prison to become the second in command of Egypt. 14 years of struggle, 14 years of disappointment, after disappointment, after disappointment. 14 years of battle, after battle, after battle. 14 years of struggle, after struggle, after struggle. But when his time came, nothing could stop him from reaching the heights God had prepared for him. There ain't nothing like God's time. When God says it's your time, it is your hour. No demon of hell, no witch of the earth, no human on this planet can stop you. So a word of encouragement for you today, if you have experienced battle after battle after battle, know that something is about to happen for you. If you have experienced struggle after struggle, after struggle, know that something is about to happen for you. But you have to have faith. You need to continue to believe in God. God does everything in his time. What the story of Joseph tells us is that remember when God moves, something can occur in a nanosecond that would take you months or years to accomplish if you could do it at all. He went from a prison to a king. Why? Because his time had come. We see it in the life of Esther and Mordecai. Esther 4.14 For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther, put by the providence of God in the king's mansion, was the way by which defeating Satan and the wicked Haman the Agagite would be made possible. We see it in the life of Jesus, Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. At an appointed time, at an appointed date, God sent his son on this earth. Everything God does is calculated. In the Bible, you'll find the phrase at the right time. 96 times at the right time your breakthrough will come we have seen god work in the lives of people in the bible how about you do you see the hand of god at work in your life thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee trust ye in the lord forever for in the lord jehovah is everlasting strength isaiah 26 3 through four. Christian, are you spinning your wheels? Wasting time and energy? Are you rushing ahead and not looking to the Lord for guidance and help? Reorient yourself back to the Lord and into his wisdom, trust in him. Rather than leaning on your own ways, be patient and wait on God. Trusting God's timing. In his time, there are bigger and better things in store for you. In his time, the floodgates of heaven will pour open on your life. In his time, your marriage will be restored. In his time, what you have been praying for, what you have been believing will come into fruition. God's delay is not denial. Don't look at what others have or what they are doing or have been given and wonder why you have not been given the same thing yet. 
God has your appointed date and your appointed hour. He has a timetable, a perfect one for everything about you. And when you accept His plan, all your needs are resolved. All your right dreams are realized. Learn to trust God. Proverbs 16, 9 says, A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. Proverbs 20, 24 says, Man's steps are ordered by the Lord. How then can a man understand his way? When God directs our paths, He sometimes leads us in ways that don't make sense to us. So we're not always going to understand everything. But if we have the attitude, where you lead me, I will follow. Our time will come.